2. The Grace of God in the Work of Redemption. A discussion of the grace of God in connection with the work of redemption again calls for several distinctions, which should be borne in mind. a. In the first place grace is an attribute of God, one of the divine perfections. It is God's free, sovereign, undeserved favor or love to man, in his state of sin and guilt, which manifests itself in the forgiveness of sin and deliverance from its penalty. It is connected with the mercy of God as distinguished from his justice. This is redemptive grace in the most fundamental sense of the word. It is the ultimate cause of God's elective purpose, of the sinner's justification, and of his spiritual renewal. At the age and of the 13, Pragnanda held the Karunakamura for us. B. This is what we place, this is what we do is used as a designation of the objective provision which God in the made name in Christ of for the salvation of man. Equality Christ for women, the we is brutalize the them. The grace of God. Rather the word than flesh protect them. and dwelt among us, full of grace and truth. John 1 14. Paul has That's the appearance the of Christ in mind when he says that our culture the is blaspheming appear, and calling us to, to blaspheme along with 11. them and some but the Christians term is applied not only to what Christ is, but also to what he merited for sinners. When the Apostle speaks repeatedly in the closing salutations of his epistles of the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, he has in mind the grace of which Christ is the meritorious cause. John says, the law was given through Moses, but grace and truth came through Jesus Christ, John 1 verse 17. Compare to also Ephesians 2 verse 7. See, in the third place the word, grace, is used to designate the favor of God as it is manifested in the application of the work of redemption by the Holy Spirit. It is applied to the pardon which we receive in justification, a pardon freely given by God, Romans 3 verse 24, 5 verses 2 and 21, Titus 3 verse 15. But in addition to that it is also a comprehensive name for all the gifts of the grace of God, the blessings of salvation, and the spiritual graces which are wrought in the hearts and lives of believers through the operation of the Holy Spirit, Acts 11 23, 18 27, Romans 5 verse 17, 1 Corinthians 15 verse 10. 2 Corinthians 9 verse 14, Ephesians 4 verse 7, James 4 verses 5 and 6, I pet. 3 colon 7, moreover, there are clear indications of the fact that it is not a mere passive quality, but also an active force, a power, something that labors, I. Cor 15 10, 2 Corinthians 12 verse 9, 2 Timothy 2 verse 1. In this sense of the word it is something like a synonym for the Holy Spirit, so that there is little difference between, full of the Holy Spirit, and, full of grace and power, in Acts 6 verse 5 and 8. The Holy Spirit is called, the Spirit of Grace, in Hebrews 10 verse 29. It is especially in connection with the teachings of Scripture respecting the application of the grace of God to the sinner by the Holy Spirit, that the doctrine of grace was developed in the Church.